What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're bringing you the CWL Olympics finals. This was the final war Team USA taking on Northern Europe. Uh, an action-packed war. Got a bunch of attacks to show you guys. We'll go ahead and start off by looking at each side of the map. And we'll go ahead and check out a Town Hall 9 attack. Check out a few 10v10s and one 11v11. We had 11 10v10s. Northern Europe picking up 12 10v10s. Uh, pretty much beat us on damn near every category. Very, very impressive clan. Uh, the clan uh, that they made for the CW Olympics. Big shout out to them. For those of you wondering, Northern Europe, uh, the countries we're looking at here are, what is it, Germany, uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, very, very action-packed war. Go ahead and start off with this insane five golem uh, attack coming from none other than Chief Redback. Huge shout out to him representing Forge from Steel. And as far as while we go ahead and watch this attack, oh, and we had one 11 v 11 three star Northern Europe picking up three 11 v 11s. Uh, again, very, very impressive war. One thing I would like to say is out of all these CWL events, uh, there, there's always some sort of an event when there's a bye week for everybody here in CWL. Uh, I mean, hands down, I'd say it's definitely the most fun. I, I think most most people who participated in this event would agree that this was the most fun that we've had for an event. I think most will also agree that it was the most drama filled and it, it's, I mean, in a way, in a weird way, just hear me out, in a weird way, it's almost a good thing because it shows how passionate people are to play this game and more so in this format where you're actually representing your country. Like a lot of us say, Clash of Clans to many of us is a little bit more than just a game. There's a lot of passion behind it. Uh, I mean, anything from us, you know, Team USA getting blamed for sharing bases and sharing attacks, being accused for modding. So there was, I mean, quite a bit of drama, at least on our side. Not sure if those of you watching or participated had, you know, that kind of experience as well. Uh, you know, roster issues, just a whole bunch of things. Can you leave clan? Can you not leave clan? Uh, the ad, I do want to give a big shout out to the admins. Yes, I said it. I do want to give a big shout out to the admins for having to deal with it, especially BRG. I want to give a big shout out to him for not only... Uh, being the main person who I believe designed or came up with the idea of the CEO Olympics, but dealing with all of the bullshit that in that was kind of went hand in hand with this event. Like I said, not only are people passionate to play this game, but even more so when you're representing your country. Um, while we're giving shout outs, I do want to give a big shout out to Joey from the Buy Forever family. I want to give a big shout out to Blondie representing North Watchers. Uh, these were the two people who were our captains uh, for Team USA, who, you know, did all the rosters, did all the war negotiations, um, and, you know, getting the time zones. You know, we had some weird time zones. So definitely have to give credit where credit is due, you know, them having to put up with everything they had to put up with. So big shout out to Joey and Blondie, our two team captains. I do also want to give a shout out to everybody that we played against. Uh, we played Japan twice. Huge shout out to them. Uh, we played North America. Um, the clans are representing North America as the continent. So I want to give a big shout out to them. Yes, even a big shout out uh, to everybody, or not everybody, the majority of the players over in Team Russia. Big shout out to them. And I want to give a big shout out to everybody over in United Kingdom in Ireland. Uh, that was hands down one of the most fun, I mean, one of the funnest wars that I've had a chance to be a part of. So big shout out to them. Uh, shout out to Tom. I'm going to give a big shout out to obviously everybody over on the uh, North Europe side. I mean, this was, I mean, making it to the finals, a whole bunch of fun. Um, who else? I also want to give a big shout out. Of course, hello, everybody representing Team USA. Definitely doing our country proud. I'll tell you that right now. Making it to the finals, even making it to the playoffs, that means you're de you definitely did something right. Uh, so definitely have to give credit where credit is due while we watched this incredible raid from AIS. Dude, six pack too. We had a couple guys, uh, like I said, we had 11, uh, 11 10v10s and a couple of um, our Town Hall 10 six pack. 
Uh, AIS was one of them. Love that new transition, by the way. All right, we'll go ahead and break down some of these attacks for you guys. Just want to get the shouts all the way. Um, you know, the admins putting this putting this thing on, the captains, you know, everybody participating within Team USA, and everybody just participating in this event in general. Like I said, the funnest event, but definitely the most uh, drama involved with an event as well. But having said that, we'll go ahead and check out this attack from Evan, also one of our Town Hall 10s, uh, who uh, 10v10 six pack. I was going to check out this attack right here, you guys. Notice he just kind of just sued his king to take all that trash uh, from six o'clock going all the way up um, and started his queen down here at about 6 30. King went ahead and took out enemy BK and ended up pulling out the CC. We have a rage for the queen and the healers as that witch goes down to the poison. And what he wants to do is break into that compartment right there where you can see that air defense. Uh, so once he takes out the wizard tower, goes in, drops one test wall breaker. And in fact, there was a mini bomb there. Goes in and sends in the rest of the wall breakers, gets the wall popped. And right here, taking on three point defenses, the bomb tower and an inferno tower. Had to go ahead and use that ability when he, uh, it, once he aggroes onto the enemy queen, he had that rage waiting, and he just trickled in a few hogs down there at the cannon uh, at 5.30 before he sends in his main group of hogs over here at 9 o'clock. Clearly, they'll be pathing around this base going counterclockwise, or going clockwise, excuse me. Uh, he had two rages for the queen charge, leaving three heals for the hog portion, sending in some more hogs up here at 12 o'clock to take out that wizard tower and to keep all the hogs inside of this defensive ring. And he has one more heal spell left to deploy. And look at that heal spell catching uh, the edge of that expo. Beautiful placement on that heal. Goes ahead and drops down the poison to take out the ground skellies. And there goes the last and final heal. Quite a bit for these hogs to get through. An expo, two archer towers, a wizard tower, and two teslas. But did not lose many hogs uh, when you started them over there at 9 o'clock. Even queen still up helping clean up this base. Also has wizards that he deployed right after he deployed the hogs don't want to get a time fail uh huge shout out uh to evan getting that six pack too dude don't damn near three starred every single war that we participated in uh here in the cw olympics so definitely want to give him a big shout out another person i want to give a big shout out to is this guy right here simple 2.0 uh definitely the town hall 10 fresh master another guy who six pack this war I do not remember if both of his attacks uh, were fresh. I want to say yes, that he had a fresh 10v10 six-pack. Don't quote me on it. I do know for a fact, though, that him taking on uh, base number nine, taking on King Tim, uh, this was done fresh. Think about that, you guys. Not knowing the CC, definitely not knowing the CC, considering he sends his queen in when there was a hound loon coming out of the CC. If we knew that, Probably would have sued her, but not going to matter with that queen under rage. Even sneaking a couple wizards in there ends up popping that hound. No problem. Still had that. Notice the the hound pop before he even need to before he even needed to pop his queen ability. So as she's going to go ahead and take the jump, there goes the ability right there. He, she's even going to go ahead and take out that archer tower and that inferno tower. Uh, starting his hogs nice and early. Uh, notice he dropped the hogs a little higher up there to take out the uh, to directly target the inferno tower while he sends some more hogs over at three o'clock. Take out the archer tower and there was even a double giant bomb. Something I'm actually surprised we don't see more at Town Hall Ten. Um, but his hogs were able to kind of skip right past it. Uh, didn't take too much heat uh, from that uh, double giant bomb. Uh, goes ahead and drops down his last heal spell. This is where it gets really, really close. I even had a chance to see this one live, but check this out. Uh, no more spells. Look, he starts to get through the wizard tower. He's got ground skellies chasing his hogs. We have an archer tower, the mortar, and they're kind of pathing around uh, this inferno tower. A uh, couple, he gets a decent split right there. Some more ground skellies. Uh, the good thing is he started his cleanup nice and early, which is crucial to these hog attacks. And he was able to take out that Inferno Tower. Uh, just a couple swings. It came really, really close. But regardless, Simple 2.0. Definitely want to give him a big shout out through these five or six rounds that we went through. Another guy we could pretty much count on every single war to pick up a 10v10. So definitely want to give him a big shout out as well. All right, next up, don't know what, I don't know if that's Chinese, if those are Japanese letters, but this is Hong. Uh, it's going to be taking on Vision from 
uh, North Europe, uh, North Europe All Stars. And look at this attack, you guys. Just take a moment to look at this attack. He's going to sue his heroes. Um, and look at this. He's going to be bringing five hounds. going to be doing a straight-up penta on this base. He's got 23 balloons. Pretty much from the Sui, uh, goes ahead and gets that archer tower, gets a cannon taken out, just helping break the defensive ring just a little bit down the bottom. Even that wizard, uh, while the BK was taking everything, and starts the flight portion, pretty much sending in hounds from every single angle of this base. I don't even know how these guys come up with these attacks, uh, and just literally swarms the base. Uh, I mean, another attack you just don't see very often. Dude had five rage spells that he brought to this attack. Uh, I mean, hitting this base literally from every single angle and still has two unpopped hounds, as you guys are about to see. You can kind of see him right there in the front of the loons. Uh, has a camp hound and a, a max hound left unpopped. Um, and he looked down at the troop bar. Didn't even bring minions. He had five freaking hounds. Knew he was going to have plenty of cleanup. Uh, and ended up pretty much completely wrecking this base. Has tons of cleanup, tons of loons, two unpopped hounds. And this was a damage CC bringing a poison to help uh, take out the uh, baby dragon. I think there might have been a witch or something in there. Uh, but beautiful job. Unique attack. I cannot tell you the last time I saw a Penta at the Town Hall 10 level. Absolutely loved it. All right, now we're going to go ahead and check out our last attack. This one coming from Exit. You might know him as Agent, uh, as he's going to go ahead and take on, uh, this is actually our one and only 11 v 11 three star of this war. You can see he drops down BK, he's going to go ahead and take out that trash, drops down a couple giants just to help tank uh, for the Archer Queen. Uh, I did have a baby dragon uh, funneling the right side. And you can see Queen is clearly heading into the base. King, uh, as you guys can see, the ground troops targeting him. You have the baby dragon. It was kind of a nasty split, unfortunate split. Uh, but he did have that, um, that max poison to help take out not only the witch, but also the baby dragon. And he has his own baby dragon who's going to lock onto the witch. As it was just out of range of that poison, uh, baby dragon finds his way and takes out that witch. And here we go. Now he's going to go ahead and start the Lalo, where he does have eight haste spells and two rages that he'll be using for the flight portion of this attack. But he went ahead and took out the enemy CC and the enemy queen uh, on that small little uh, Sui, you know, having the couple giants a tank for the Sui heroes. Dropping down haste, uh, starting with three haste, a rage right over the expo and that first infernal tower bringing in some more hounds way over there if you can see it over at nine o'clock followed up by another hay spell keeping these loons constantly moving through this base pops that grand warren ability as all those loons are approaching not only an air defense the infernal tower but also two expos uh, they're pretty much gonna one shot it still has a wizard tower left up but he has that hay spell there it goes they're gonna go wizard tower archer tower air defense he's gonna have plenty of troops up the air defense uh, ended up taking out the grand warden the grand warden kind of helping uh tank for those balloons there but ends up getting the job done all kinds of troops that are helping with cleanup has pups uh cleaning up this base very very nicely some minions and of course has tons of loons left up beautiful attack again our one and only 11 11 three star of course agent gonna be picking it up We'll go ahead and times two this. And that is pretty much going to do it for the CWL Olympics finals recap. Uh, big, again, I gave plenty of shout outs to start off uh, the first five minutes or so of this recap. But again, a big shout out to Team USA, all the clans that we ward. I do want to give a big shout out to the admins for putting this thing on. Hopefully the next one won't be so drama filled. Um, but yes, we, I don't even think I said the score in the beginning. We did get the defeat, 145 to 147 was the final, a solid two-star victory uh, for uh, North Europe All-Stars. Big shout out to them, congratulations. Uh, they are the champions in the first ever CWL Olympics. Hopefully we can do it again. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Any comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section below. And this is Riggs from Riggs Gaming, and I'll see you guys in the very next video.